I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Can we call for that daily bread now? Say, Father, thank you. I receive today my daily bread. It is coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the Bible says the communication of our faith will be effective when we acknowledge every good thing that is in us, also that have been given to us. So when you acknowledge that you have daily bread to receive, your faith will walk. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Father, I would bless you. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for your glory that is hovering on the earth. And especially your glory in us, manifesting on the earth also. So the earth is full of your glory, Lord. It comes from above and it comes from within us. And the whole world is enveloped in your glory. And there is a fire burning in the hearts of men. A righteous fire. To seek your truth. To walk in it. And to rest in it. I declare today burdens are being lifted from every heart. Yokes are being destroyed right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Now I read a scripture to you yesterday from Acts chapter 26 and verse 8. Paul speaking, he says, Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? If you don't believe and reason it out, that is easy for God to raise the dead. Hey, there's a reason God gave us a brain. He, he has never asked us to put our brain to sleep. When you walk with God, your brain must be active. I'm telling you the truth. If your brain is not active, you can't really walk with God because he wants you to think. He wants you to reason. Reason words. You've been made so intelligent that you can reason the word of God. I'm telling you the truth. You can reason the word of God. And God always has helped us to reason his way. The Bible says his thoughts are not our thoughts. Yes. But you see, he has done a lot to make us understand his thought and come to his level of thinking. So when he says his thought are not our thought, he's not just putting us away and say, look, you guys, just stay there. I'm, I'm here. You can't think like me. Forget it. No, he does everything. That's why Jesus will say to his disciples, how is it yet that you don't understand? Why? Because he wanted them to understand. See, you remember when the disciples, he told them, beware of the level of the Pharisee and the Sadducee. And then they began to reason among them. They said, oh, it's because we did not carry bread. Say, what's wrong with you guys? How come you don't understand? Understand what? You just said we should be aware of the leaven or the yeast of the Pharisee, meaning we should not buy bread that is made from the yeast of the Pharisee or the Sadducees. Now, if we had carried bread from our hometown before we got here, I don't think you would have asked this question. And Jesus said, hey, guys, what is wrong with you? That's far from what I'm talking about. Now, why were they reasoning that way? Oh, we are going to need bread now. We're going to have a hard time selecting which bread is from the Pharisee, which bread is from. So what do we do now? Oh, Jesus, I wish we had. Jesus said, why are you reasoning among yourself that you did not carry bread? And he asked them a question. Have you forgotten the 5,000 and how many loaves were left? Have you forgotten the 4,000 and how many loaves were left? Why is it that you still don't understand? You look, look now. Now, hold on. What was Jesus expecting them to understand? He did two miracles 
And then after doing two miracles of bread multiplication, he is now asking the disciples, based on these two miracles, you are supposed to understand something. Understand what? That I can get bread anytime I need. But that's not a normal way to reason. Is it now, 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 I'm, I'm just, you know, you understand what I'm doing now? The normal way of reasoning is not miracles. The normal way of reasoning is not bread multiplying. The normal way of reasoning is plan properly so that um, you have enough bread in case you want to feed the people. That's the normal way of reasoning. Put enough money together, call people out to gather money, find the best bakery, buy the bread. And, but Jesus said, how come you still don't understand? Meaning, he wanted them to understand something. Meaning, it is a credible thing to believe that God can multiply your bread. It's not out of place. You see, sometimes you find people, they share, wow, do you know, um, I've not had a job. And, and, and this is like Gabba Shakaya. Father, increase our understanding. It's a prayer point. Increase our understanding. Sometimes these things are so normal to some of us. But we, we try to communicate it to people and they, they think you're speaking, like, where are you from? What are you trying to communicate? What are you trying to say? These things are so normal. But some people think it's an incredible thing to believe God to meet your needs and to live that way. You know, some, some go, uh, yes, you know, God can do that. But you see, that is not his way of doing things. <laughs> Read the Bible. For 40 years, God was miraculously feeding the children of Israel. 40 good years. Do you know what that is? 40 years, meaning a child that is born, a child that was born from when manna started coming to the children of Israel. He is now 40. To, no, ask that child. Hey, ask that child. You see, the, the, the people that came out of Egypt, they are used to planting, having bands, you know, sowing and reaping. They are used to that kind of life. But hey, think about it. A child that was born in the wilderness and now he's 30 years old, never seen them grow a crop, never seen them do any business or any... He, he just wakes up in the morning, he goes outside and gets food to eat. He, now, if God didn't want them to reason that way, then he... He, he, he is then a, a very bad God. One year, two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. How, if you are now expecting that person to go back to the other kind of life they did, how do you expect this kind of person to cope? Then there must be something God was at that we don't understand yet. So, and guess what? After 40 years, God became angry with them. I said, forget it. These people, they will not enter my rest. Why? For 40 years. The Bible said he was angry with that generation. He was angry with them. Why? After seeing manna, one time they, they asked for water, he gave them water from a rock. Another time they asked for meat, he gave them meat. They ate enough meat. In fact, the Bible said it began to come out of their nose, just like God said. They still didn't understand what God is up to. Look at your life. He's done the first miracle. He's done the second miracle. Yet you're still bothering. You're still bothered. You're still worried. Oh, well, 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 will God take care of me? Well, 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 can I, you know, is it just like the children of Israel? They were raising up a miracle generation, but they were spoiling their minds with imaginative talk and thoughts. 
Imagine children growing up and eating manna every day, eating quails every other day, and drinking water from a rock that was <laughs> before then dry. And then they are busy telling them, hmm, this is not the, this is not life. We don't depend on this thing. No. This is not life. Oh. You have to walk with your hands. You have to walk with your hands. Hmm. You better. You see, that's how they were talking. And generating unbelief in the heart of people whose hearts should have been single in believing and following the Lord. So every day they were waiting to see the day the manna will stop. Every day they were waiting to see whether it's not come today. Hey, hey oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, you know, people are that way. Sometimes God can take you out of your job. So you didn't do anything wrong. People just conspired against you and you were fired. And here you are praying, where? God, where were you? These people were conspiring. Oh, Father, have you abandoned me? Oh, Lord, where were you? No, he was there. And can I tell you, can I make it worse for you? He orchestrated it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just like he orchestrated them to, 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 to arrest Jesus and to hang him on the cross. Don't you know he orchestrated it? The Bible says if they had known, because God has hidden this wisdom. So if the princes of this world had known that the killing of Jesus was God's plan for salvation, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they had known, but of course they didn't know. But how, how, how do you reason that out? God expects you to reason it out. Yes. So when I say, how do you reason that out? I'm not saying forget it. Don't even try to reason it. No, you've got to reason it out. Because it's when you reason it out that your believing is confirmed. You might be in the midst of a revival right now. You might be in the midst of a miracle right now. But until you reason it out... What do I mean reason it out? God always expects, God, without your reasoning, see, and that's what mistake people make. They think faith is a spiritual thing. It has nothing to do with our mind. No, our minds confirm our faith. So faith without works is dead. That's what the Bible says. How does that work? You see, faith, you believe, the Bible says, with the heart man believes. But then something happens next. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So when you believe God with your heart, because you have heard his word, that is faith. But then what you do is now your works. Now that is where your mind comes in. For example, God said to Abraham, take your son, your only son and go sacrifice him on one of the mountains of Moriah. Abraham said, okay, sir. Now he heard the voice of God. No other person heard that with him. That is faith. But then because he believed it, don't think after God spoke to him, his spirit entered him. He just said, Isaac, follow me. Let's go. No, he had enough time. The Bible says from where he was to the mountain was three days journey. He had enough time to consider what he was about to do. He had enough time to accept it as the will of God and God's purpose being fulfilled in his life. That is where his mind came in. And that is what the works of his faith was. So when we have faith, there are always physical things we do and those physical things must, we are done based on our reasoning. So the ingredient of your reasoning is now the word of God or now the thoughts of God. So your mind is fully at work. But what motivates or what stimulates your mind is different from what stimulates the mind of an unbeliever. Now a man is in unbelief simply because of what stimulates his thoughts. If all that stimulates your thoughts are what you can see, what you can feel, or what you can, 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 can touch or, or, or hold, then you've got a problem with God. Same mind. Another person. Now, this thing works in all, all everything. Everything we did works in it. No, some people believe in ghosts. Some people believe in, in demon spirits. Why do you believe in demons? Hmm. If you know the kind of experience I have had. Now, their experience is now influencing their reasoning. So, say, I can't stay alone in the dark. Or I can't stay alone in my house. Why? Ah, hey, you don't understand. 
You don't understand. Even some people, movies they have watched, that movie is creating an experience. It begins to influence their thoughts. So you see, your mind is always influenced by the thoughts that you are exposed to. So when somebody doesn't believe in miracles, when somebody doesn't believe that God can miraculously give you money, it is simple. His mind has not been influenced or exposed, so exposed to the workings of God. Our time is up for today. I'm going to continue tomorrow. God bless you. Today I pray that you receive the blessing of the Lord and, and function in it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye-bye.